For weeks in the cold and arid highlands, I need a change. Returning to the pass by bus, I join a group cycling to Koroiko in the lush Yungus region. Well, this is 15,000 feet. At the top here, what I'm doing is heading down that windy road, 10,000 feet to Koroiko, which is some tropical paradise. Oh, I'm not getting up, I haven't even started. And I'm going with these lunatics. Oh, all right then. <laughs> The entire ride is 38 miles long and the drop in altitude is nearly 2 miles. The price is $49, including a lift back to the pass. The first stretch of the road is paved and an experienced rider can do speeds of 50 miles an hour. As we're heading down into the Yungas, where coca leaves are grown, we need to stop at an army cocaine checkpoint. What they're doing here is they're checking for the components that are used to make drugs. So they're not actually checking for drugs, they're looking for hydrochloric acid and kerosene and stuff like that, right. big quantities which might be used to um, process the cocoa leaves that are all grown in the region down here. Do they find quite a lot? Ah, no, it's entirely done just to get aid money to come overseas. Stop in here. Right. Welcome to the road of death. World's most dangerous road. Sorry, say that again in the last bit. Road of death. Or the world's most, the world's most dangerous road to You're a dangerous man. <coughs> the reason it got the name of the world's most dangerous road is because before the 1st of May, when they changed it to one way, there used to be a vehicle falling off at every two weeks, which meant that the, on average there was a person dying every day from uh, road accidents. Now that it's one way, they fall off uh, a lot less frequently, but they still fall off, mainly due to too much speed and not enough experience with the road. We haven't lost a cyclist over the years yet, so that's pretty good. The condition of the road is poor on this section. It's very narrow and the drop is sheer. A new road was being built, but the work stopped when the money ran out. So this is the uh, spot where the uh, last truck went off before they made it into a one-way system. It was the one that finally convinced them that it was a bloody stupid idea in the first place making it two-way. Um, there's actually a bit of a park over the back there. What was it, a big bus or a truck? Um, it was a big bus. It had 23 people in it. Eight of them died. Um, it was backing up to let another vehicle come through and then it just rolled off the side. Went quite a long way down. Your chances aren't good, are they? Yeah. No. way to get down mountains this is madness it might look all control but it might look all control but the drop off is like Phew! it's like a mad arcade game Woo -hoo! five o'clock the direction of the traffic changes instead of going down the vehicles now head uphill we just made it Trees is like been in the Mediterranean. I've got my shorts on and sun. I think that's why a lot of people from the past come here as a little breakaway. Ooh. And another reason is because there's lots of nice walks out into the hills. The Yungas are jungle filled valleys between the Andean Heights of La Paz and the Amazon Lowlands. The subtropical climate is far more hospitable than that of the highlands. The land is fertile and ideal for growing Bolivia's biggest cash crop. Here in Bolivia they've got a bit of a mixed blessing. 
which may produce the strongest coca leaves in the whole of the world, which then produces the strongest cocaine. And there is a big illegal cocaine economy here, but this is all legal because the leaves are used for making tea, medicine and toothpaste. But by selling his crop to a cocaine baron, a farmer can make far more money. The USDEA destroys about 20,000 acres of illegal coca each year. But as long as there's a demand for cocaine, Bolivian farmers will grow the leaves. Nearing the end of my journey, I headed back up into the mountains again to trek to wind up on the sea, one of the spectacular Andean peaks that overlook the city of La Paz. Well, if you're going to get high in Bolivia, you might as well get really high. That's where we're headed. Well, I've got to say, Bolivia has amazed me. It's like before I left, I had no idea what it'd be like. And now I'm here. The thing that gets me is every time you turn the corner, it's a, like a surprise. And it's not like a bang in your face. It's like a little something that creeps up on you and you just go, wow, look at that. Especially in a country that is so hard for the people to live in. It's also hard to travel. Because in one day, you can get frostbite, hypothermia, and sunstroke. I have the lot to survive and I loved it! Woo!